Hi, my name is Dennis Siri. I am executive director and founder of the New York City Independent Film Festival, Independent in Spirit, International at Heart. And this is the New York City Independent Film Festival Meet the Filmmakers podcast. Join us while we meet this year's filmmakers. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, welcome. Today we welcome Sean. So please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hi, uh, my name is Sean Hainsworth. Um, I am thrilled to be part of the festival. Uh, I have been um, working on film for probably over 30 years. Um, I made uh, several documentaries back in the 90s um, and then uh, took a break from filmmaking um, and have sort of jumped back into it. Um, recently started a uh, um, comic book graphic novel publishing company. So I've been publishing uh, my own stories that way. And the film in the festival technical support um, is based on one of my comic books, which is called Aerotech. I used to own the New York City, I used to own the Village Comic Art Shop over on 6th Avenue. I don't know if you... Oh, you did? Wow, yeah. And then yeah. also, I started St. Mark's Comics. I, I, I started that also. But kids came along, I needed more money, and I went to work in corporate America, and then now I'm doing this. This will all be cut out. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's okay. We have the same story, because I, I was doing documentary film, and then kids came along, and I joined corporate America, and now I'm back. Um, so same story. But yeah, no, that's great. Um, we used to go in to go to all the New York comic shops, Forbidden Planet, among others. Um, when we were uh, in high school, we'd take the train down and, and check out all the comic book shops. So um, yeah, I have three three um, uh, comics that I've started. Um, and uh, one is um, Aerotech, which is um, sort of a, an, an office comedy about a Silicon Valley startup that makes sex robots that mis misbehave. Um, and so technical support kind of flips that and it's the customer perspective of receiving, you know, the unboxing video, as it were. Um, I also have uh, sort of a comedy of horrors about a vampire that descends on Woodstock in 1969 called Woodstock. Um, and uh, and then I have a, an epic sci-fi and I'm working with different artists um, uh, around the world because that's the world we live in. And uh, it's, it's awesome. It is. Same thing with the festival. Our, our judges are literally all over the world. And I, even our curators are in Holland, Paris, Montreal, Japan. So yeah, that is the way it is right now. Um, and I just got into Diamond. I'm going to be distributing through Diamond starting in, uh, I'll be in the June catalog since you know what that is. Good. Very nice. Very nice indeed. All right. So I guess what made you decide to do a film? How did you get into it? Uh, I guess I've always really uh, loved film um, from an early age. I studied film um, in college. Um, uh, I went to Harvard back in the 80s, and um, it was a really interesting department of um, uh, sort of came out of the cinema verite world, but Ross McElwee was there when he had made Sherman's March, and um, Bob Gardner was there, who's a big ethnographic filmmaker, and um, so that that's what sort of brought me into documentary um, and, and that style of filmmaking. Um, but I've always just loved film. I, I lived in New York for 10 years and just went to, you know, all the theater theaters that I could to watch as many movies that I could. Now I live off the Criterion Collection. Um, but, uh, you know, I've just been a, I've just, I don't know, always been drawn to storytelling and always been drawn to visual storytelling. Um, and so, um, you know, once again, that's where the comic books are great because, um, you know, unlike what is required for, a film production, um, a comic book is just me and an artist, which, you know, having it, everything slimmed down is is really satisfying. With that said, it's also wonderful to do it at scale. It's with a, yeah. an actually, but it's a lot more money and time and uh, and people involved. <laughs> so, um, but we were very, very fortunate with technical support. Um, we hooked up with a really good production company in Greenpoint, um, um, uh, Roland Studios, they were amazing. Um, I hired a director in New York, Chris Lefko, who was amazing. Um, we had a great cast and we had a really, really fun two day shoot in Brooklyn. So it was a good experience across the board. Sounds great. Sounds yeah. good. Um, thank you for submitting to us and we look forward to showing it. Yeah, well, because it's a New York based production, everyone's coming. So it'll be really fun. A lot, all the people or as many of the people who worked on it as possible will be there. So that'll be fun. That'll be great. Yep. All right. The other question I have is, so 
do you find any support from your family and friends? Or are they all sitting there going, what happened to you? You used, you used to make money and now you're doing this. But no, no, it's kind of the opposite. I think, um, you know, uh, everybody's, well, you know, my mom is like, I'm so glad you're back into doing what you love. And, uh, you know, everybody's like, yeah, you know, I, and my attitude is I'm, I'm not getting any younger, you know, I'm pushing 60. So um, not that old, but um, not as young as I once was. So if I'm ever going to do it, now is the time to do it. And uh, cool. I have a lot of support. Um, my son is really into filmmaking um, or into film. Um, I've been able to show him all kinds of weird stuff ever since he was a kid. So um, he's got a very eclectic taste in film, which is fun. So he's excited. And uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of support. That's great. I'm happy for you. All right. And so as far as filmmakers, do you have a tribe of filmmakers that that that, that you use, that you that that you surround yourself by on a regular basis? Or I don't. Um, that is one thing I lack as a tribe. And it's going to be nice to be on a film festivals again, because uh, when I was doing film festivals in the past for documentaries, it was, you know, 20 years ago. Um, and then I kind of moved out to the sticks um, of Massachusetts and raised my kids and really didn't do anything in the film industry for, um, you know, almost 20 years. So whatever contacts I had are very stale. Um, I still um, I still get supported by my professors. I still am in contact with, you know, Alfred Guzzetti and some of the um, people I studied with. Um, I still edit. I, I edited an ethnographic film for um for some people that I uh, knew from college, but um, my network is pretty small these days. Um, and actually I haven't seen a lot these days, um, you know, just uh, um, so I kind of looking forward to re-engaging with the film community. I'm looking forward to being at film festivals and watching um, a lot of stuff and, uh, and starting that up again. Um, my well, first film have... festival actually was the International Feature Film Market back in, Oh, 1992 at the Angelica is like one of the early years. So that's how far back um, <laughs> I go. And uh, probably my last film festival was in 2002. So it's been a long time. Been a while. Yeah. yeah. I guess what decided to make you want to do with this film? Was it because you already did the comic book and you wanted to turn it into live or what was Yeah. It? So I thought this would, well, you know, it's uh, this was the first thing I wrote um, when I started writing again. This short, I wrote it up as a short story, and I always thought it would make a really good short film because it's very self-contained. It, it, um, you know, eight minutes, and it, it says its piece, um, you know. Um, but I also made it as, as kind of a proof of concept. I, I do think that this idea, um, you know, could have legs as, um, you know, potentially a TV series or as a feature. Um, so, um, you know, part of it was just I thought this was a really good self-contained eight minutes. But I also feel like the idea could be expanded and um, I wanted to get something out there that I could really, you know, point to and say, this is what I have in mind. This is the tone. This is the style of humor, um, you know, that I think could carry a longer piece. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'll have to see um, how we can how we can do in, in developing the idea. All right. So what was the hardest part of making the movie? What would you say was the hardest thing? Yeah, the hardest part for me was... Um, reconnecting with the people that I really needed to produce the film, um, finding a, a line producer. Um, and uh, once again, really lucky to work with Roland Studios. And actually we were scheduled to shoot in July, which ended up being three weeks after the um, uh, SAG um, strike. Right. So we were completely up in the air. Uh, we did get a SAG waiver um, and actually it helped us because a lot of the crew had been working on um, TV shows and other things that had shut down. We got a lot of people who had been working on Severance and other shows and uh, suddenly they had nothing to do. And so um, we were very fortunate to get some really skilled and great people that um, once again, Roland Studios knew. But yeah, that was the hardest thing for me was, you know, once again, being physically located in Massachusetts, not having a lot of connections. Um, I had to, uh, I had to really find the people that could make it happen for me. And, um, and Anthony Argento, uh, and Chris Lefko, the director, they were amazing at, um, you know, tapping all of their networks. Good. Right, great. And what was the most fun part? Oh, the most fun part is shooting. It's always shooting, right? Um, seeing it come to life was extremely fun. Um, the actors were great. Um, Courtney, um, who plays the robot, um, she actually does a sex robot stage show. 
um, uh, called the Veronica 5000. And so she was just phenomenal, you know, um, just, just nailed everything. She was just hilarious. Just the absolute right balance of, uh, of kind of robotic and also a little, you know, sadomasochistic and just, just perfect. Um, but, you know, watch, you know, as a writer, it's always fun to see things come to life. Um, and, uh, you know, Davey was great. What the actors bring to it on, on the set is the most fun thing because you have an idea of what it is in your head and then they take that idea and they expand it and all of a sudden they're doing things you didn't imagine and doing better things than you ever imagined. Um, yeah. Chemistry starts to happen. Um, with that said, it was, you know, extremely anxiety provoking. You know, we were running late as always, losing the sun as always, afraid we weren't going to get it, you know, completely done as always, you know, I, we didn't have an extra day. I couldn't finance, I could barely finance the day we had. So, um, you know, uh, that, but it was, it was really fun. Okay, great. And so I guess the next question I have is in the indie world, it isn't always, you don't quite often don't become rich. I mean, like I, I always love whenever somebody says Martin Scorsese was an indie filmmaker. He's like, no, no, he's not. He's really not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so what do you count as success? Like, like, what is success in the indie world? What would you say that was? If yeah, I mean, so for me, I'm at a point in my life where success for me is I'm able to put my stories, you know, my vision out there, right? And and uh, I would love it to be self-sustaining. And that's across comic books, graphic novels, you know, films, Um you know, the comic book business is very much like the film business in that, you know, most lose money, um, but the, you know, but the, you know, the one that makes money can pay for all the ones that lose money, you know, if, if you get one of those. Um, so, um, you know, but at this point, it's just the joy of, I, I wrote screenplays for years before and writing screenplays is wonderful and also terrible because nothing exists, right? It's, and screenplays have a very short shelf life. And, um, you know, when when you're done with them, if they don't find a home, which 99.9% .9 of them don't find a home, they're just kind of gone, <laughs> absorbed into the ether of unproduced screenplays. Um, and so turning that around, well, there's two things about that. I mean, one, um, you know, when you're a screenwriter and you have no agency in whether something gets produced or not, you feel, well, you know, you're on the wrong end of the power structure, right? You're just at the whims of... Of, of everybody else. But when you flip that around and I said, I'm going to now produce these as comic books now, um, you know, that gives me a lot of agency and a lot of creative satisfaction. It's been really fun to see these things come to life. So I would just like to continue to be able to do it. I have no um, illusions about getting rich or even breaking even, um, you know, but um, as long as I can, I'd like to keep doing what I enjoy doing. Um, and hopefully it finds an audience. We'll see. So, so, so you would say getting the product done is what you, you find this out. Yeah, the process even. It's just really sense. fun to make things. I think that's why we're all in it, right? right? We would love people to pay I, us to make I things. I totally agree. But the yeah. success is actually being getting the product finished. Yeah. That, was, that is success. I agree with you, actually. That's mm -hmm. amazing. And why get it. If somebody, let's say your son came to you and said, Dad, I'm not going to go to college. I'm going to make movies. What would you say? <laughs> It's smack in the back of the head. No, I'm only kidding. I've actually thought about this because I, uh, I imagine, I, I imagine that conversation is not out of the realm of the possible. Um, you know, honestly, what I would do is, um, I would suggest that he go work um, as a PA, or you know, he's really into cinematography. As you know, just apprentice himself as an assistant cinematographer somewhere, even if he's unpaid initially. Like, get on the set every day and see what it's actually like. Um, a lot of people have a lot of illusions about what, you know, what day-to-day -day life in the film industry is like. And it's hard, long days, um, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, my advice to my son, and we can talk about a more general advice, would be, you know, go do it for a while and see what you actually think of doing it and learn. Um, I think one of the things is, you know, it's funny, I, I love... But Japanese cinema, I love among all uh, many different types of cinema, but I love Japanese cinema. And, you know, what was so interesting is these directors would apprentice for years before they ended up directing their own films. And then they would direct, uh, you know, 30, 40 films um, as a lot of, you know, directors back in the studio system did. And boy, did you develop your craft back then? Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot to be said for that um, is, you know, is learning a lot about how how things actually work. Um, 
somebody who's at you know who has a, an idea that would like to make a film i think um yeah it would be encouraging but also you know the realities of um production are hard um production can be expensive and as you know there are so many films out there now it's really competitive right. i mean when i was submitting films to festivals in the 90s i don't know how many people we were competing at, competing against but it wasn't you know 10,000 submissions from all over the world and that's because digital video is inexpensive, more people have access to it. It's wonderful. There's more and more voices coming up, but that's more and more competition, right? Yes, um, it so it's hard. It's very hard. It's very hard, yes. All right, so, I mean, that's basically my question. So I guess at this point in time, I would just say, do you have any thoughts you want to say? Anything you want to say? Any questions you want to ask me? Anything, you know? Yeah, no, I think... Um, you know, I'm really excited to be at the festival. I'm going to come to the opening, um, you know, be there as much as I can. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to other filmmakers, getting myself back into that space. Um, there's so much exciting stuff going on. Um, you know, it, this is like my reintroduction to the film world after 20 years. So um, a world that has changed dramatically. So I'm just happy to be here. Thrilled to be a part of it. And thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. Hang on a second. Let me just plug your movie let me just get this in my brain all right so yes and your movie is a technical support it's going to be showing wednesday at 7 15 on uh, at the new york city independent film festival which take place at the producers club um, in new york city it should be a lot of fun so uh, everybody come and come and see it all right thank awesome. you thank you very much